Good morning, everyone. I am coming down here. Oh, wait, the banana. I'm coming down here to get the hay nets so we can get these guys more hay out because they finished it up. Aries boy, what are you doing? Here comes the rest. Oh, hi. Oh, no, you're Cameo. Sorry. Hi, Cameo. Look at them all go. I'm coming to get your hay nets, you guys. Oh, I love watching them run. It's the best. You guys feeling good this morning? It's a little chilly. Hi. Hi. <laughs> All the sassy horse. Yeah, so I am coming to get hay nets to feed these guys. Here's one over here. I put uh, all of their hay in a hay net. It helps them eat slower and it helps them not to waste all the hay. So I'm gonna grab these, load up the hay, and then my human's bringing them down and the skid steer for me. Cause I can't actually travel to hill it with the hay, uh, the hay bale or anything. They're like 1400 pound hay bales. All right, you guys, it's coming. All right. The ponies are waiting for their hay. So I am in here and I am preparing um, some stock that I made using uh, roasted beef bones in my slow cooker for days now, days. Um, and I've got it on the, on the stove now and I'm going to simmer it until it reduces down really far till it's like almost a paste consistency. And then I'm gonna pop it in the dehydrator to make bouillon out of. So I'll show you that process as it goes along. Let me change the camera around so you guys can just see my stock on the stove. The amount I have here is not gonna make very much, um, but I'm gonna keep doing this for a few days and I should have a whole big thing of bouillon to cut half. So. Here you go. Ooh. Here is my stock simmering. So um, it, I'm going to freeze this just to be, cause I didn't feel like going through the extra process of pulling all the fat off. If you wanted it to be like a more pantry stable um, bouillon, you want to let it cool and then skim all of the fat off. That way the fat does not go rancid, but it's going in the freezer. So I'm not concerned about that. So I'm going to let this simmer for We'll see how long it takes, and then I will show you guys how I do the next step. All right, so my um, stock has reduced down close to the level that I wanted at. Not quite exactly. I could let it reduce a little bit longer, but I'm impatient, and the dehydrator will make will do just fine. I'm not dehydrating anything else for the next couple of days, so it's not like I'm in a rush to get this in and out of there. So I'm gonna turn the camera around and show you guys what my stock looks like now when all it's just... So, oh, let me zoom out there. So you can see before we were about halfway up, you can see where it started, about halfway up, and now it's like really thick and kind of syrupy. So, Oh, I forgot to grab my tripod. I'll go grab that real quick and set that up. But I'm going to be pouring this over here onto this parchment I tested just to see how it felt on there and it's nice and sticky and reduced. So I'm gonna be pouring that reduced stock onto this sheet, this cookie sheet, pan sheet, whatever you wanna call it, that's lined with parchment paper. So let me go grab my tripod and I will be right back and show you guys that. All right, so I think you guys can see this area here. Let me go grab a spatula. I know you guys can see this, not sure what you can see of me. It could all just be boob shot, if it is. I apologize. 
So I'm just kind of scraping this out a little bit and then I'm just going to drizzle it on here. Oh, I wish I had another person. Scrape it, scrape it, scrape it. So I use parchment paper. It is liquid resistant if you guys don't cook much, so it's not going to uh, absorb any of this. All right, there we go. That's in there. That'll get a nice soak. Now I'm just gonna kind of try and evenly spread this around the sheet. And then I have a big fancy dehydrator. Um, and I'll show you guys that. You don't need anything near as fancy as mine is. Actually, you could probably do this in your oven if your oven doesn't have like the turn off safety feature. Um, all right, we're gonna call that good. That should break apart evenly. So you don't wanna make it too thin um, or else you won't be able to like break it off of here. So you wanna have, I guess about a quarter of an inch is what I've got going on. So I'm going to grab the phone and take you guys over to the dehydrator. Alright, let's grab our sheet. Oh, it looks so great. I'm so excited. Uh, I think it fits in here, but I don't remember. Um, fit. Fit. Wait, I'm going to put the phone down. Hold on. So I made it fit at the very top of the dehydrator. It's, it's a little off kilter, but it's okay. It's gonna be just fine. Next time I'll use a smaller one, but it was there. I'm not redoing things. So for this one, this is the Cabela's giant one that we got. Turn her on. Maybe I should plug her in. Oh, I swear it was plugged in. Hold on. Hi, Ursula baby. I need you to scoot out of the way. I swear it was. On, off, on, oh. Ha ha ha. That's the lights. I'm silly. I don't need the lights on. I can turn them off. So for this, I want to do uh, 155. Four. We're going to do 12 hours because it was pretty runny and then check it. It's usually between 8 and 16 hours, somewhere in there. And there she goes. And I will come check on it in 12 hours, which will be tomorrow when I wake up and show you guys. Hey, so it is the next day and I was in the kitchen right now, I swear. Um, this is fully dehydrated. It took 12 hours, I'm guessing. I was asleep by the time it was done. I woke up. So here, you can see, nice and hard on here. So what I'm gonna do, you can see it's already starting to flake, is flip it over so it can flake off into here. And I'm just going to pull back parchment paper, maybe. on there. As you can see, my thing was not in the dehydrator evenly, so it got a little clumpy on one side. But when it goes in evenly and I and you choose something that fits right, it peels right off of the paper. But you know, I was I didn't check. I didn't do this the way I should have. I just wanted it done. It's okay, it still peels off this time. But yeah, you can see it breaks apart nice and hard and crumbly. Yay! Oh, wait, I can bring a little chunk up. Run around the kitchen. Hi, Pepsi. Pepsi is very interested. Okay, let's see. Oh, see, there we go. This is oh, 
Go back and focus. Focus on me. Well, it only wanted to show you one side. But yes, that is the dry, nice and hard stock. And then I'll show you what I do to store it. The dogs also really like it. It is a delicious treat for dogs because this is just stock. No, there is no um, spices or seasoning of any kind. It is just boiled down bones. It's dog candy. There we go. Yay. So now that I've got it all on here, I have my coffee grinder, which cleaned out. Um, if you have a coffee grinder or spice grinder and you need it cleaned, I just add like a quarter cup of rice in there and blitz it, the rice in it for a little bit and it does a really good job of soaking up the oils and cleaning up the coffee grounds and then I just wipe it out with a damp paper towel. All right, so I'm going to add my bouillon in here and try not to make too much of a mess. I still will though. I. I try not to be messy, but there's just like, it's an inherent flaw in me. I'm just a disaster walking, but I try. Okay. All right, there's round number one. Toss that chunk in there. Oh, it sticks to you. Let's grab my lid and go. meaty. I should probably label this because it looks exactly like brown sugar. <laughs> so we'll get it thinking it's brown sugar. Oops, I might not have gotten a big enough jar. We'll see. I might need a bigger one. Break it into pieces. This one probably could have gone a tiny bit longer, but it's going to be fine. Yeah, this one should have should have dehydrated a tiny bit longer. Oh well. Got a couple gummy pieces in here. I'm just gonna pull them out. I'll pop them in with the dryer section and see if we can get it good. And again, this is going into my freezer, so whatever isn't fully dehydrated right now will be later. Um, if you wanted to keep it, you know, at room temperature, one, you'd have to take all the oil out, but that I, and I didn't do that, and two, um, you would want to, it's way more than I thought, uh, take those pieces and just pop them back in the dehydrator for another hour or two. But I'm not, I'm not very concerned. Yay, I'm so excited for how much this is making. part here. 
And then I'm gonna add some drier pieces in with it. Actually, you know what? For these really sticky pieces, I'm gonna give them to the dogs. These can be dog pieces. They'll enjoy it. Nice healthy treat for them. Seems pretty good. Oh, there's so much gelatin in here. It like touches your skin and just turns to gelatin. <laughs> Put it all on here because I'm running out of room. up, set them to the side. The dogs can have them later. All right. And I'm just gonna, I have a couple bigger pieces in here, so I'm just gonna kind of run it all through one more time. this I'm just gonna run a bit of rice through here and then rinse it and it will be good to go for a coffee again so this actually made way more than I thought it was gonna make I made one whole jar um, and so one teaspoon of this is what you use for one cup of broth and it's not salted or anything so you have to add salt some people what they do especially if they're storing it in the pantry is that they'll add equal parts salt to this so like you know one jar of the powder to one jar of salt or one cup of powder to one cup of salt. Oh, it's so, it's so sticky. Wait, I have to show you guys how much, this was cooked for, I don't know, four or five days. And, and wait, does this finger do, yeah. Uh, focus, focus. Here, it's so sticky. There's so much gelatin, which is awesome. So this is how I make homemade bouillon and this is what I do with all of my stock instead of canning it and, and everything because it's so much easier to store. And usually I make it shelf stable but I didn't have time to sit there and wait for everything to cool because I needed to use this that day so this is what I've got. All right. Hey, I am editing once again. and. Cause I'm just a terrible filmer. I'll get I'll get used to this eventually. I forgot to like film an outro kind of thing that day. So yeah, that was how I made my stock. That's what I did. Ding dong, ding dong. The entire time I heard him, you guys, ding dong is gonna be in every video. Like that's just how it is. Ding dong likes to yell at us. So yeah. So that's how I make my stock and um, how I powder it. Well, not how I make my stock, but how I make my bouillon and how I powder it and have it dehydrated and all of that. So that went in the freezer. I'm working on some more. And what I'm gonna do with my next batch is that I will refrigerate it overnight and then I will, um, before I reduce it, I will refrigerate it overnight, scrape off the fat and then reduce it and then dehydrate it and grind it. And then that will be a uh, shelf stable. Blah, 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 blah shelf stable bouillon and I'll add some salt to that as well um, to use in like broths and stuff like that for soups and it's right there. The one that I did is awesome for um, ramen. I love ramen. So for ramen you don't want it salted because you make uh, I don't know how to say it. Tar, tare, tear, something. T-A-R-E and that's like your that's like the seasoning part of your ramen so it's like soy sauce usually sometimes mirin or um, rice vinegar 
things like that, you add your like green onion, garlic, whatever you want in there for your flavoring. So I really like that specific uh, bouillon for ramen and I like the full fat in there and all of that, it's so good. But yeah, so that is that, that is this for, that is that for this vlog. I need a nap today, I cannot speak apparently. Um, and I will catch you guys later on another vlog. Alright, bye.